Good morning. The Christmas Eve Masses this year will be at 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. On Christmas morning, the Masses will be at 9 and 11. It is very important to note that those planning to attend any of these Masses must register as soon as possible with the parish office so that arrangements can be made to accommodate the numbers. The parish office number is In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lovely to see you this morning, folks. Uh, quite a change in the weather, eh? I think I saw that by Wednesday or Thursday, the high is supposed to be minus four or something like that. So last weekend we were here in our bathing suits, and uh, this weekend it's quite a bit cooler. So, uh, yes, so Christmas is coming, and let me be the first to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and, uh, and to encourage you to, to think about which Mass you would like to attend uh, Christmas Eve, and, and uh, just give a call to Kathy at the office there, and she'll jot your, down your name and fill in a slot there, and let us know how many people are, will be coming with you so that we can make sure there's lots of room for everybody. We'll probably have to leave a little bit of, you know, a little extra space too for people who don't, don't know about it, the fact that they have to call in. But talk to your friends and, and relatives and people you know, especially folks who maybe just go to Mass a couple of times a year, Christmas and Easter. Um, I believe there are one or two of those people out in our community. Um, and, and tell them what the arrangement is so that they won't, uh, won't get caught. But we'll, we'll have to leave a little extra space in the church for those people as well. Anyway, we're here and uh, we're about to enjoy the beautiful gift of the Mass and each other's company as well. Uh, each of us reflecting and radiating uh, the presence of Christ. So let us prepare ourselves to enjoy this moment of grace. Let us acknowledge the abundant mercy of God and as we receive this gift, let us be ready to hand it on to one another. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us be seated now for the reading of God's holy word.
A reading from the book of Proverbs. A capable wife who can find her. She is more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellency, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands, and you shall be happy, and it shall go well with you. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Blessed is the Lord who hears the Lord. Thus the man who blessed, who fears the Lord, the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. You are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and sober. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two and to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. 
But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents and saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, folks, it's great to have Jim here uh, recording the Mass. Uh, he's been here two Masses this Sunday, and Kathy's been playing. It's her second Mass. You get to hear my homily twice, guys. <sighs> Lucky you. I was flipping around the TV stations a couple of weeks ago, trying to find a golf tournament that was on, and uh, I landed on the Kojiko station, and me saying Mass... And I couldn't believe how boring the homily was. Just couldn't. I said, oh my gosh, you poor people. So if you don't get time off purgatory for, the, for those homilies, folks, something's wrong somewhere. That's for sure. Especially Jim and Kath. Anyway, um, so this past summer, uh, there was a fire at St. Luke's High School here in town. Um, and according to an article in the newspaper uh, recently, the damage was more extensive than originally thought, and uh, students won't be getting back into the school until at least uh, late spring. And so in the meantime, uh, classes are now being held uh, for St. Luke's students at the former Kempville Agricultural College. Uh, and, and at Hanley Hall as well, we have some students there. And this is a mixed blessing for those kids uh, and for their teachers. For some, it's a much longer bus drive. Uh, some students live in, uh, remember, it's a regional school, so some kids live in Cardinal, Prescott, Rockville, others in Carlton Place, Lanark, Smith Falls. One girl told me that she spends two hours going and two hours coming home every day on the bus. It's a long time. But on the plus side, the buildings are in good shape and uh, they've been well maintained. And, uh, and St. Luke's staff, if they're, they're very adaptable. They've had to be over the years. Uh, you follow the history of the school. But one of the greatest assets of the new setup is the grounds are the grounds of the school. There's a big football field 
And uh, over the years, uh, forests have been planted on the, on the, on the uh, campus. And there are beautiful walking trails through these forests. And uh, so uh, this is something that St. Luke's has never had in its 20-some years of existence. And uh, so they're really taking advantage of it and, and enjoying that part of it for sure. So right now in phys ed, it's touch football season. The kids are out there um, quite often uh, um, enjoying the, the out of doors. I think, you know, I think there's a benefit for kids to get exercise and to get outside. I think there's a classroom benefit. I think uh, they're, they're a little more focused when they come in. And so at St. Luke's, they try to get the kids out there quite a bit. Um, but you know, there's some kids that I really feel sorry for, frustrated with and sorry for. Um, and these are the kids who will not participate in the touch football games, who will not compete. The ones who prefer just to stay on the sidelines with their heads down. Especially the kids in the lower grades, the grades, you know, St. Luke starts at grade seven. And you ask them, why? Why don't you get, why don't you get out there and play? Oh, I can't do it. I'm not good enough. I don't like football. Really, it's a supreme lack of self-confidence. And some of St. Luke's students haven't had a whole lot of encouragement or positive reinforcement over the years. Not all, by any means, but some. Now, the teachers find other things for them to do, but the main focus is on that football game. And uh, the kids just don't know what they're missing. And of course, they're teenagers, or just about teenagers, and they're, so they're really self-conscious as well. But they're missing out on so much by refusing to give it a try. You don't have to be a star. No one will mock you or ridicule you. Just give it a try. They don't know how much fun they're missing out on. Being part of a team, interacting with other kids, stepping out of their comfort zone just for a little while to see what they're capable of. Your heart breaks for these kids. Maybe it's a lack of support at home. Maybe they feel deeply inadequate because of some situation they're dealing with there. And maybe the kids do face big challenges. Many of these kids do face big challenges in that regard. Again, not all. Maybe they have been uh, ridiculed in the past and made to feel ashamed of themselves just too often. and They don't want it to happen again. But this is a chance to do something that will give them nothing but positive feedback from their teachers and acceptance from their classmates. But it's so hard to get them to see that. In a sense, those kids are like the servants in today's gospel. They were all given a considerable amount of money, not just to keep the master's business going while he was away, but primarily so that they could share in their master's joy. These kids are like the servants, the servant who hid his money in the ground. They aren't like the woman in the first reading who is industrious, creative, and generous, or like the servants who shrewdly invested what they had and received a great return as a result. And because of that, those kids are sad. They feel deeply inadequate, and perhaps even unwanted. And the tragedy is, they're not. They're not inadequate, and they're not unwanted, but they believe that they are. And, and neither are we. We're not inadequate or unwanted. The master in the gospel had a project. And if you take the master to be Jesus, The business of the master is the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven like? Jesus is often asked. It's people who are willing to take the risk of identifying with the master and his business and his enterprise. The come, and, and, and who are willing to come to his table and, uh, 
and to jump in there with Jesus and say, Lord, I'm with you, and I'm going to help build your kingdom. I'm going to take what I have by way of talents and energy, and I'm going to use my talents to build your kingdom right here. Today's gospel is an invitation for all of us to join in the master's joy as together we build the kingdom of love. This is uh, the world day of the poor. It's the fourth world day of the poor. It's part of uh, Pope Francis' vision for the church that we be more conscious of the needs of the poor. And of course, it's a big part of the gospel of Jesus. Um, The prayers of the faithful will, will reflect this theme in a very special way. And it's something that we here at St. Francis have tried to address in various ways as well, to be attentive to the needs of the less fortunate in our community. It's really central to our mission statement and to our our identity as people who identify with Jesus Christ. So I invite you now to stand for the prayers of the faithful. My brothers and sisters, Using our royal and priestly gifts of baptism, let us pray for the mission of the church, the development of all people, and for those in most need due to poverty. For the church, call to show Christ's mercy to others, especially to the vulnerable people who suffer most, for the wisdom to use our abilities in service to others for God's glory, For all who exemplify the poverty of St. Francis in their lifestyle, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who lack the basics of life and are not accorded human dignity, for the working of the Holy Spirit in our midst to raise up men and women who will care for the poor and disadvantaged, for those who embrace the sick, the lonely, and all immigrants and refugees, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all religious who devote themselves to the cause of social justice. For the women of our parish who bring their many talents and gifts to our community. For the work of all aid agencies throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish. For those who have died recently including George Garreau and Patricia Branche, sister of Marilyn Molinas, in memory of Doug Henderson and all the deceased members of our families and parish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Attend to the prayers of your people, O God, and encourage us to use our talents as generously as you have allotted them, so that, being faithful to your purpose, we may become shares in your glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you 
and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Using the first acclamation, the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop with all bishops, priests, and deacons and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our, earthly pro when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Francis de Sales and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth and charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day and uh, watch the Masters. The Masters is on today. Be careful you don't end up with on Channel 10, though. You'll see my homily again. You don't want to do that.